All right, in this video, we're gonna to learn to um, draw and, and imagine really magnetic fields. Um, and so what we've got here to, to start with is a, a simple case of just a permanent magnet, like a bar magnet. Um, and so you notice there's two ends of the magnet, a North Pole and a South Pole. And uh, if you may remember from say middle school, that with a magnet, um, opposite poles attract. So if you bring another magnet nearby, the, um, the south end of another nearby magnet will want to be attracted to the north end um, and north to south. And so what that means is if you bring in another little baby magnet and say put it right here, right? What's gonna happen is the south end of that baby magnet is gonna be attracted to this north side. And so what we're gonna represent that as is a little arrow where the tip of the arrow is always gonna represent a north pole and the tail of the arrow is gonna represent a south pole. Okay. Um, so the south is attracted to the north and so the, the magnet would orient itself like this. Okay. If we um, put a magnet here, um, likewise it's gonna orient itself so that that south pole is, um, is attracted to the north. Um, so it's gonna look like this. And by symmetry, if we move that magnet up here, it's gonna kind of point like this, right? So we're just drawing the direction that a little baby magnet would point if we put it here. Um, likewise, if we go here, the north end of a magnet is gonna to wanna to point toward the south end of this big one. And so it's gonna orient itself like this, where again, that's the north end of a little baby magnet you put there, and that's the south end of it. Um, likewise, if we go here, it's gonna look kind of like this north attracted to south and north attracted to south. Um, interesting thing to think about is if we were to put one here, a magnet here, the north end of that magnet will of course want to be as far away from that north as it can get. So say this was a north end, it would try to push away. But it's not going to be oriented like this because then that would bring this south end too close to that south. So it's like a bit of a compromise where this south end gets kind of pushed away from that south and this north gets pushed away from that north and what will happen is it'll kind of settle like this. So at locations like this, the magnet's gonna be oriented this way. Where again, this would be the north end of a little baby magnet that you put here and this would be the south end. And by symmetry, it's gonna be the same up here. Um, so it's gonna point like this. Well, so if you play around with this enough, um, you know, any a magnet that you stick over here, again, is gonna kind of point away and away and, and magnets over here would point toward like this. Um, what that ultimately lets you do is draw what's called the magnetic field. So the magnetic field um, just points in the direction that like a little baby magnet would point if you put it here. So if we now sketch this in, uh, over here on the left the magnetic field just simply points away because any magnet that you put here would point away. Uh, over here, any magnet you stuck here would point toward this end. Um, if you move the magnet around kind of coming up this way, it's going to point away and then wrap around and come back in. And then by symmetry, this one's going to go away, come back around and come back in. Right. And then maybe just for, I don't know, aesthetics and completeness, maybe I'll draw another set of lines where this would go away, wrap around, Come back in like this. So what we're drawing is the magnetic field around a bar magnet. Um, and so the, the general, uh, general kind of impression you might take away from it is that the magnetic field lines come out of the North Pole and then they come around and go back into the South Pole. Okay. Um, so what we've drawn here, this, this set of lines, this is called the magnetic field. And this field um, is going to be represented by the um, by a vector called B. Okay, so over at this location, B points this way. At this location, B points like this. This is what's called the magnetic field, and it's simply the, the to get the direction. You just imagine putting a little baby magnet there, and the magnet the way that the little baby magnet points, the way its north pole points, that's along the direction of the magnetic field. So that's field around a bar magnet. The, um, another way to make magnetic fields, besides just having a magnet, um, is, is to run current through a wire, right? So what we're gonna do is look at a current carrying wire um, from three different views. So this is actually the same wire, but here you're kind of in a helicopter looking down on the wire, 
Here you're looking at the end of it such that the current in the wire is going into the board. Um, right, so I might even write, uh, it says end view and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say current into board. Right, and then here is what I'm calling like a, like a 3D view. You're kind of off to, off to the side of this thing so you can see the wire receding like off into the distance and there goes the current. Uh, so as it turns out, if you take little baby magnets and put them in uh, around the wire, okay, in the space around the wire, what ends up happening is, I guess I'll start with um, uh, this one. No, I'll start with this one. If you put a baby magnet over here, okay, it turns out that the little baby magnet will point like this. And if you move it over here, it turns out it's gonna point like this. So the upshot is what will happen is that the magnet will point um, in such a way that the, the field that's around this thing, that, that's supposed to be at the center there, um, the field circulates around in this particular direction, okay? Um, so it turns out if the current's going into the board, it circulates around this way, this way, right? It does not go around this way. It would go this way um, in the counterclockwise sense if the current was coming out. But it's not, in my example, the current's going into the, into the board, and so the magnetic field circulates clockwise in this case, right? So um, maybe for completeness, we'll draw um, a, another little set of lines around. So then the field out here, since you're farther away, would be weaker, but it would still circulate around in this direction, okay? So it's gonna circulate um, clockwise. In this 3D view, we can kind of draw it like this, like around the, around the wire here. The, the field is gonna circulate like this. And then just to represent that the wire is kind of going off in the distance, I'll draw like what in principle would be the same size little loop, but it's looking smaller because it's going farther and farther away from us off into the distance. Okay, so the magnetic field just swirls around this wire, right? What we're actually building up to, or what I'm trying to build up for you, is this notion of, um, uh, well, it, to imagine which way the field points around a current carrying wire, I'm gonna introduce what's called a right-hand rule for this. And what you do to picture the direction that the field is observed to go in, is you imagine grabbing the wire with your right hand, a uh, right thumb in the direction of the current. So here's this wire going off in the distance. If I were to grab that guy, grab it, my fingers swirl around in the direction of the field. And you see that's the case up here, okay? Now, of course, magnetic fields in reality, they got nothing to do with your right hand, but all this is is describing what we see in nature, that if you run current through a wire and then you hold a compass, a little baby magnet here, um, this is the direction that little compasses point um, when you um, have a current carrying wire, okay? So another view of this, this is like your helicopter view of that uh, wire where the current's going like this. We can use the same right hand rule where you pretend to grab it with your thumb in the direction of the current. And what you find is in the plane of the board over here in this region, the field's going into the board. So a way that the physicists like to draw little vectors going into the board is you draw little um, uh, X's that are like the tail feathers or what's called the fletching on an arrow. So you can just imagine that you've like shot an arrow into the board and it's going in. So the field goes in to the board here, wraps around behind the wire, and then on the other side it comes out. And the way the physicists will often draw that is they'll just draw little dots. Um, sometimes you'll see a dot with a circle around it, and what that's supposed to be is basically an arrow coming at your face, right? It's coming right out of the board. Now, I'm not able to write in space out here with this type of marker, um, but if I could, um, floating out here, uh, sort of above the wire, the field would just point to the, to the right here. So the, the field lines go into the board here, wrap around, come out there. So they circulate around like this. Um, so these are just three different views of what's called the magnetic field. Okay, so we've drawn the magnetic field. If you use that right-hand rule of you know, pretending to grab a wire with your thumb in the direction of the current, um, as it turns out, you can then imagine or draw what magnetic fields and other configurations look like. So now what we're gonna do is that current carrying wire is gonna be bent into a, um, into a loop. 
So it's like a circuit um, where you know you could imagine in this circuit to get the current to run this way, there's a battery uh, oriented like this, and it's and it's firing the current around. Um, and so what we can do is let's well let's figure out which way the magnetic field points because it turns out current carrying wires make magnetic fields. So what you want to do is pretend to grab this thing really anywhere with your thumb, with your right hand, gotta be right hand, with your thumb in the direction of the current. Uh, and what you'll see if you do that is everywhere on the outside of this loop, you'd have field going into the board, into the page, let's say. So out here it's going like this. And then within the um, loop on the interior, it's gonna come, it's gonna come out. So we'll draw our little dots here. So it's going into the board out here and out of the board here. So magnetic field points like this and then wraps around, kind of comes back down. So if you were to put a little baby magnet right here, it would just point straight out of the page. And if you put a little baby magnet right here within the plane anywhere of the board, it would point into the board. Um, so here, here is that loop of wire. What I'm trying to draw here is that you've, you've kind of taken this loop of wire and tipped it so you're looking at it edge on, all right? Um, so this part of the, um, the loop of wire is supposed to be like closer to you than this back part, okay? And so if, let's do the same thing. All I'm trying to do is draw the same field from a different perspective. So let's play the same game. You pretend to grab the, let's grab this front segment with our thumb in the direction of the current. And what you can see is your fingers would wrap around such they come up in the interior of the loop. And so the field within the loop is gonna kind of point up like this, right? Um, here, I guess over here, the current would be going into the board. So if you grab it with your thumb in the direction of the current, again, your fingers would swirl around and kind of come up through the middle. So your magnetic field around a loop of wire looks like this, and then kind of wraps around and goes down on the outside. Um, so it looks like that. Maybe I'll draw one more little set of loops um, like this. So it comes up in the center and then down around the outside like this. Right, and again, just so you don't get lost, this is what we're drawing is the direction that little baby magnets would point if we put them there. Now again, I'm not able to draw in, in the space out here, but you can imagine this thing extends in, in uh, what, three dimensions? So field lines would come out here and wrap around in, in front of this donut here, in front of this ring, I should say, and then come around and go back up through the center. Um, well, so what's interesting to notice with this is notice how similar this loop of, of uh, or this field around a, um, a loop, a current loop, looks to, for example, if I were to have a baby magnet with a North Pole and a South Pole, if you remember with a bar magnet, field lines come out of the north, wrap around and go into the south. Out of the north, into the south. So having this uh, charge kind of moving around in a circle like this um, gives you the same uh, uh, field, same shaped field as you would get from say a bar magnet, okay? Um, in fact, now that you see this, so, so charge that's rotating around like this, um, acts, it itself acts like a little baby magnet that has the North Pole here and the South Pole here. Okay, so, so charge that's kind of spinning around like this acts like a little baby magnet. This is actually a big part of why uh, it turns out with like particles like electrons, they act like little baby magnets themselves and the physicists called that property spin. Um, and the reason they did that, it's kind of like inside physics joke or something. The, uh, it's as though the electron is like a little ball of charge that's twirling around and then acts like a little, little, little bitty magnet, okay? Um, so that's kind of where that term even comes from. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is just get you to be able to picture magnetic fields around um, uh, current carrying wires. All right, so last little thing we'll do with this um, so that's around a loop of wire. A um, couple more little pictures here to, to look at before we wrap up is we'll look at two more configurations. Um, one is just uh, any old circuit. So the, the interesting implication of all this, what we're doing, is this is saying that anytime you operate a circuit um, with a battery and some resistors and wires, anytime you operate a circuit where current would be running around in the circuit, 
that means that you are making magnetic fields in the space around it. So depending on what kind of instrumentation you're working on, the stray fields produced by one circuit could mess around with other parts of your, your electronics or other circuits. Um, so just applying this right hand rule again, pretend to grab the wire with your thumb in the direction of the current, field would go into the page out here, um, same thing into the page out here, and it would come out of the page in the middle of the circuit. Um, so just operating a circuit makes some little magnetic fields around the circuit. Um, final configuration, if you want to have, so loops of, loops of wire can make magnetic fields. Um, one more scenario that we can look at is if you um, basically stack loops by making a coil. Um, so in this case, current would come out of the battery, around here through the back of the coil. Here's the front of the coil where I've, that I've drawn thicker. So current would be coming this way, wrap around the back and come here in the front. So what's, I'm just gonna start drawing the part in the front. So if we grab that, so here's a current carrying coil. If we grab that, that segment of the wire with our thumb in the direction of the current, we can see that we get this field that's gonna punch down through the coil. Um, so a magnetic field would look like this. It would go down through the coil and then wrap up and around on the, on the other side like this. Um, so here's the magnetic field around a um, coil, which is really just a stack of a whole bunch of loops. Right? So if you want a nice big field, you take a whole bunch of loops and stack them on top of each other. And so this is why coils um, are used to make uh, you know, reasonably sized big, big magnetic fields. Um, and notice that this field or is acting like field lines are coming out of here, circulating around, coming back in. This field is acting just like a bar magnet that's oriented like this. Field lines come out of the north, wrap around and go into the south. Uh, did I draw the arrow the right way? Yes. So out of the north into the south, that's the magnetic field that you get from a coil. All right, so I hope you learned a little something about how to picture and draw magnetic fields uh, and uh, enjoyed it. Thank you very much.